Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's Pick a Card reading, we're going to take a look at creativity. We're going to take a look and see, are you in the flow? We're going to take a look and see what it is that inspires you, what makes you creative, how do you get into the flow, how do you go with the flow. And the idea for this episode came from a video that I was watching that is titled, I've got it up on my screen now, it says, Wow, Chanel, Journal of a Collection. And I'll put a link to the video below so that anyone who wants to watch it, you're very welcome. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through a portion of the video that really inspired me. And I'm going to play that in the introduction here. So do stick around for the introduction this time because I think it might aid the reading. If you don't watch it, it's okay. The reading will still work anyway. But this time I think the, the introduction is going to be kind of interesting because I'll pull out a bit of footage of one of the seamstresses at Chanel and she's talking about how she does the work that she does. And she explains that she learnt the basics of making clothes at school, but then where the creativity happens, where the excitement and the magic happens, she figured all of that out on the job. And she says this most incredible thing, and I've got it up on my screen. She says, that's how it is. The fabric speaks and suddenly the hands speak. And I just thought, wow, that's incredible because she's explaining how she works with the fabric and the fabric is almost telling her, you know, make me beautiful, make me into this shape, make me sing, you know, make me do this kind of thing. So she is working intuitively. She's working creatively, she's working intuitively, and there's something transcendent about being creative. There's something about going beyond this plane, you get out of time, and it's incredible, right? And I think that's why creativity is such a beautiful thing. It's kind of an addictive thing, you know, you, you want to keep being creative and keep making something and, and keep experiencing that feeling of timelessness. So perhaps through these readings here, we'll be able to explore how that works for you. And I've also got my training deck, which um, I'll just show you really quickly. This is like a, a deck of cards that I have scribbled all over. So you can see I've written my own hand written notes all over this, this training deck. And this is a thing of creativity, isn't it? That like sometimes when you're learning something, instead of just reading from a book or instead of just watching a video, you want to get hands on. You want to pick something up, feel it, touch it, scribble on it, do something. You know, another thing I was thinking about was when I was working for, I worked for a technology firm one time. Uh, this was, you know, when I was doing my work in marketing and advertising, that kind of thing. And anyway, I was there at this company and we would get these sheets of A4 paper and we'd pin them up on the wall and we would scribble things and, and we would stand back, look at a distance and figure things out. We would go close and scribble and deal with detail and, you know, just sometimes putting things up on a wall can be really good. Little things like that can just be that spark that gets us going, that, that gets a project started and that gets the momentum happening. and you know, then you've got this energy that, that you get to really enjoy of a creative project taking place and you get to birth something amazing. So I'll show you that little bit of footage now. So those of you who want to stick around and watch the footage, please do, because it's just really interesting. I'll put a link to the full video below so that you know where it comes from. But otherwise, um, you're very welcome to choose from group one, group two, or group three. And I look forward to seeing you in your reading. Qui vous a appris à faire les toiles Les toiles J'ai toujours aimé euh, toucher, créer le tissu, euh, enfin, en fait, toute petite. Euh, C'est avec ma, ma grand-mère qui était couturière aussi. Elle allait au, au carreau du temple acheter euh, plein de tissus. Et du coup, moi, j'étais chez elle en vacances. Et euh, elle avait plein de valises avec plein de tissus. Et euh, bah, j'habillais mes poupées mannequins avec. Et C'est elle qui m'a appris euh, vous avez appris sur le tas, quoi. Ouais, comme ça. Ouais, bon, après, euh, j'étais à l'école, hein, quand même, <rire> pour apprendre les bases. Mais euh, en fait, même sans base, des fois, je, fin, ça sort comme ça au bout des doigts, quoi. Je sais pas, c'est <rire> comme ça. Ouais. 
le tissu parle et du coup après les mains parlent. Et vous lui répondez. Et voilà, c'est ça. <rire> Hi there group one, so if you chose group number one, let's take a look at the cards that you drew through. So you got the relaxation card straight up. So as with any of my readings, guys, please take on board what resonates and discard what doesn't. These are general messages, so not absolutely everything will apply. So you've got the relaxation card there. Now for tarot, you have got the hermit in reverse. Gosh, that's beautiful. You've got the sun in reverse. And amazingly, you have got the sun again from another deck, from my astrological deck. So that is incredible. I would love to meet a statistician one day and find out what are the odds of getting, drawing the same card out of 78 cards. I mean, there are fewer cards in this deck, but the odds of getting the same card from two different decks, it's pretty amazing. I know there'd be some amazing mathematical thing behind that. Okay, let's take a look. Tejas. All right. And you've got a quote as well, which occurred to me during a very brief period of analysis. What I do is I do take a look at all the cards before I record the session. I take a brief look and get a feel for the energy. Now, for this card, I actually want to read out what comes in the guidebook because it's so beautiful. And it's really well written. So it says here, Tejas, subtle essence of intelligence and courage, radiant and glowing. It says your intellect and courage glistens in your eyes. You have a radiant glow to you that reflects your passion within. You are on this planet for a reason and are deeply committed to your higher purpose. You carry a spark of energy, the sun, <laughs> a massive spark, um, you carry a spark of energy that uplifts those around you and you are a natural born leader. As a warrior of love, you are committed but to raising the vibration of this planet, even if it sparks controversy. By being your highest self and committing to your truth, you encourage others to do the same. Continue sharing your spark with those who have lost theirs. So this is a really stunning card to receive in any reading. And it's showing me that you've definitely got quite a massive purpose here on this earth, even though you might not think, you might, be, you might feel it, you might feel it, you might go, yeah, I know I'm here for something, I'm really supposed to do something amazing or big. You might be feeling that quite strongly. I'll tell you the people in particular with the astrology who do feel that quite a lot. If you run a Jupiter-Mercury line with your Rahu Ketu axis, wow, you'll definitely feel like You'll, you'll have a sense of knowing, you'll know that I'm here for something really big. Um, and you definitely are. We've got the Sun card twice. And as I say, the statistical odds of receiving that is, is pretty incredible. And this has happened in past readings. I think it's happened for group number three, if I remember correctly before, but it's happening here for you. Your soul needs to express something quite big. But what's happening at the moment with the energies at the moment, and this is a timeless reading, so if you've clicked on this recently or if you clicked on this a couple of months from now or whenever, at the moment you're choosing, because you've chosen all of these cards and you're choosing the moment when you listen to this as well, at the moment when you're choosing to listen to these messages, there's something about you resisting, I believe, slightly resisting birthing this massive purpose that you have there's a resistance here when the hermit card is upright you are naturally in a state of it could be seen as hibernation it could be seen as time out but it's not without purpose it's extremely purposeful when it's upright yes you're alone and you're separated from the world you're being extremely spiritual you're healing we've got the star here so you are doing your inner work and you are doing your spiritual work and that's going great, right? When it's upright. It's in reverse for this reading. So that is indicating to me that you are resisting. Uh, you're resisting timeout 
which you need, okay? Because the very first card that we got here is relaxation. So I do think you're resisting this, this hermit time. You need it, but you're resisting it. And I think it's something to do with, it is something to do with your purpose. I think you are feeling that, my goodness, I've got quite a lot to do. Um, but, but you're resisting the rest and relaxation that you're going to need. And when with the hermit, the kind of contemplative time out that we get with the hermit, it's not without purpose. It's massively with purpose. It's like just you being, just you meditating and emitting the vibrations that you do into the collective consciousness. Just by being, you're helping all of us. And I've said this many times on the channel before, that your peace and your happiness is quite possibly preventing a war from kicking off somewhere. You might not think so. You might not think that me having a good day is a good thing for the collective, but believe it or not, it is. It really, really, really is. That's your contribution to the whole. But there's some resistance here, and I feel that you're resisting the rest and relaxation that you really, really need. So let's take a look at this quote here by Caroline Mace. Now, when I was going through the readings this time, as I was contemplating each one, a person popped into my mind. Now for group number three, a person popped into my mind and I wrote down a quote and I thought, you know, why don't I just write a quote for each group? So I thought about this group and I thought about these cards and I Google searched Caroline Mace. I just want to see, okay, what quotes come? And I picked this one because I thought this was perfect, this reading. It says, the soul always knows what to do to heal itself. The challenge is to silence the mind. And I think this message is really important for some of you out there, that the soul, which is the sun, look at that, and it's upright. And I love this depiction of the sun here in this card set with the gold foiling. I mean, this is the best version of the sun in all the decks I have, and it's upright. This one is just upside down. I think that's just because. So we've talked about why this is upside down. Why is this upside down? This is some blocked creativity, possibly. Um, it could be an intimidation around like how big your life purpose is, but this is the thing. See, this is a, this, and this is why I mentioned if you've got Jupiter, Mercury in your Vedic chart, your Rahu Ketu axis, these people always know that there's some massive life purpose that I have. I'm going to shuffle on this card. I'm going to see, and I'm going to use my training decks. Now this training deck, I showed it in the introduction. I've scribbled all over it. And the reason I'm using this is because this is a reading that's all about creativity. And I thought it's, it's appropriate for me to use my training deck that has scribbles all over it. <laughs> I don't need to, but, um, because the cards always speak to me and I, I don't need to look anything up or any of that, but well, let's just use this. So let's just shuffle on this. Um, but I wanted to show you my messy scribbles and you know, it's, it's a creative thing going on here. Um, let's shuffle on the sun. See, why is this upside down? I actually don't use this deck very much at all because I find that all the writing distracts me. Uh, I much prefer, my favorite deck is the Lightseer's Tarot. That's my absolute favorite. <clears throat> okay. What have we got here? We've got the High Priestess. All right. And she's upright. Mm-hmm. What's next? We've got the King of Wands. Hang on, did I show you that properly? I probably didn't even show you that properly just now. High Priestess and the King of Wands. Look at that. And we're definitely talking about creativity. We're talking about the sun. We're talking about your talent. I mean, these are beautiful. So this is telling me that you're very highly intuitive. Extremely so. Okay, this is, this is the ultimate. The High Priestess is... And this is your feminine side. This is your feminine energy. And this is your masculine side. This is your masculine energy. Now, this is in the upright position as well. Big picture leader. Okay, let's see what else have I got here. Big picture leader, passionate, driven, inspiring, intuition, occult secrets, inner voice, wisdom, unconscious mysteries. I mean, to me, 
this is confirmation that I feel like maybe you're ever so slightly in... You see, this is it's reminding me of a Marianne Williamson quote. She talks about this thing that we're actually most afraid of our light. And I'm definitely feeling that here. Because you've got massive inner light to shine. I think you're in a... When it comes to are you in the flow, I think that you are massively in the flow. Creatively, I think you're extremely creative. I think you've got a lot to birth and a lot to give. This card also talked about that the nature of what it is that you're going to give is going to benefit all. It's just this. It's just, and it's, and it's this. The soul always knows what to do to heal itself. I think there's some physical healing needed. I think maybe you need a bit of time out. And I think you need um, a, bit of, a bit of rest, really. And I think if you get, mm, you're a little bit like group three. I did have a look at group three briefly. If you want to watch that one, you can as well. Group three also has this thing of, um, sometimes our body needs to know what is true rest. Because sometimes it doesn't. If, especially if you've been doing a corporate career, you've been really busy, you're working hard, you know, you drink the coffee to get yourself going in the morning and you know, you, a lot of people do that and they're winding down with a, a glass of wine at night and they're that kind of thing, and look, that, do what you have to do. I'm not saying that's not a good thing. But what I am saying is that yeah, the soul always knows what to do to heal itself. The soul, the sun has come twice. Knowing mm, our physical body is so important to creativity because it's the instrument that receives all the divine ideas. And you have to look after that physical body, okay? So important, so important that you rest. So important that you know what your body is like at rest. You see, that's another really important thing because a lot of people are running on nervous energy, they're running on adrenaline, they're running on all kinds of other things and external, you know, have a quick chocolate bar and do this and do that. And I'm not saying don't eat chocolate, I love chocolate, but like <laughs> what I'm saying is that um, to just be conscious you know, of, of, of that you're doing that, and if you are doing that, but to be conscious and to get to know what your physical body needs and to really know what true rest is, because creative ideas and, and this massive creativity that you want to birth, creative ideas comes to a rested mind. So you also need to be, and look at that, the challenge is to silence the mind. I think you need to rest your mind a little bit, quite possibly. We've got fire here, we've got major arcana. Yeah, these are big, these are big energies, guys. This is massive. And I think you're gonna need, you're just gonna need timeouts and rest along the way. I think it was Napoleon who used to, didn't he like have a little nap every, I don't know, he used to do the power nap thing. That doesn't really work for me. <laughs> but you've got to find out what works for you. Okay, that's going to be important going forward. So, you know, are you a day person, a night person, um, et cetera, et cetera. Knowing the body. Knowing the body is, is, is really uh, all that it will take to make these upright. Let's put them upright now. Because quite frankly, I mean, this, you've manifested all this. And this is just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful energy. Some of the best energies, yeah, that I've drawn in a while. So guys, that is your reading for today. I hope this has been helpful. Please let me know in the comments below. It always encourages me to keep going and inspires me when I read what you have to say. So thank you so much to all those of you um, who leave a like or comment, but don't worry, like you don't have to either. <laughs> Just if you feel drawn to. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number two. If you chose group number two, you're in the right place. Let's take a look at the cards that you drew through this time. Okay, so you've got the release card. That's beautiful. As with any of my readings, please take on board what resonates and please discard what doesn't resonate because there are a lot of people tuning in, so not every message is for everybody.
Okay, Ace of Cups, upside down. Okay. Queen of Swords in the reverse position. And you've got the Strength card. You've got an extra one for Tarot uh, because this card was actually left behind in the deck. This, this was the only one. I shuffled them all. And those two popped out very easily. And then this one was left behind. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I have to include it. But we might shuffle and get some clarification if we need to. Okay, you've got Solar Eclipse. Beautiful. I love the design on that. So cool. And you've got Rajas. Fantastic. Okay, now I've got a quote as well, which we will talk through in a moment. Before we do that, I'll just tell you it's an overview type thing. This is a reading about creativity. Are you in the flow? How do you use your intuition? What will help you be more creative? So we're definitely going to look at that. But there is one thing that is coming up just a little bit for some of you. I don't know how many of you, but I feel like you're having some kind of, your heart is having a little bit of a clear out. <laughs> so it feels like um, something from the past is being eclipsed or cut out of your life. And I, I'm pretty sure when it's a solar eclipse, you'll be jumped forward on your path kind of thing. And I do feel that this has to do with the heart. Okay, this, this does have to do with love. So if you're in a relationship, then this could be, uh, I'm, I'm definitely not saying this is like the end of the relationship, no. Um, what I am seeing though is that like, whether you're in a relationship or not, it kind of doesn't matter. It feels to me like some old energy is being eclipsed out. So in your current relationship, that will free you to love your partner more. Or um, if you're single, this is just good because it might help make you a bit more radiant or seen or, or whatever. Your heart will become a little bit more free. So that's just a little extra thing. And then because the strength card has appeared as well. And this is so I started to see some love stuff here, but we're going to talk creativity with this spread. This is a terrific spread for creativity because when we look at these cards in that context, that's where, I mean, this has come, really look at that, this has come twice. You're getting a really big message here, aren't you? Which is to let go and to, to release stuff and to cut out old stuff. Now, one of the big, simple messages that's coming through here is do some clutter clearing. This is a really good time for you to just go through your house, go through your stuff, go through what it is that you don't need. I know Louise Hay, she's pretty strict. She says, if you haven't used it for a year, get rid of it. I'm not that strict. I tend to be a bit more like two years, you know, like two, three years, right? I'm not so strict on that. But she's very like, if you haven't used it for a year, get rid of it. I feel like you do need to do some, some clutter clearing and what you will find is that you'll be a lot more free to be creative. A massive energy release will happen. And it's important that we periodically do this kind of activity. You know, we periodically clear out the attic, definitely the tops of cupboards. That's something I learned from Heidi Sawyer. She says if you're, and she says putting things in boxes is a disaster. It's dead, trapped energy, don't do it. And she says that look at the tops of your cupboards. And I know in England, I definitely made sure that the top, and well here as well actually, I've made sure that the top shelf of my two small uh, cupboard type things, they're virtually empty. And she's got a big thing about keeping the top shelves very light. A lot of people, um, they put very heavy, bulky stuff in the top shelves and boxes and things that never get opened. That's really, really bad. Okay, so that was definitely a big message that was coming through. But as for your creativity, if you watch the introduction and you saw that 
seamstress from Chanel and how she was talking about how she when she works with her hands and she touches the fabrics and that kind of thing then the ideas come and the fabric speaks to her and it tells her how it wants to be made and all that kind of thing so she's got this physical touch thing going on with creativity for you I feel like it's it's this cleanliness is next to godliness thing. It's it's that. It's like, and I I'm very much this kind of person. Like I need to, um, if I'm being creative, like my desk needs to be totally neat, and everything needs to be totally neat, and my room needs to be in order, and like I need organized an organized situation. Then when I work, I get very messy. There's papers everywhere, and this and that, and it, you know, it all just goes nuts. But like before I begin, I need this I need to have a clean clear slate I need to get rid of stuff I need to so that's really important for me now when I was going through these um, in the third group I got a quote come into my mind and that's because I know a lot of um, that person's quotes by heart and that's why it came in so for you I thought who does this spread remind me of and because of this card Rajas and I started thinking about uh, how Rajas is Venus and Mercury and then I started thinking about who's got Venus and Mercury quite prominent in their chart well anyway Lee Kuan Yew came into my mind <laughs> so Lee Kuan Yew those some of you will know is was uh, the founding father of Singapore and I google searched some of his quotes on leadership and this one I thought was particularly apt so he says you lose nothing by being polite the answer is no but please say it politely and give the reasons. Lee Kuan Yew was a very strict kind of guy and he was a visionary and he was, he was this kind of guy. He was this kind of no nonsense, cut it out. If it's not working, you know, it's, it's like a cut off the dead wood and, and go and be creative. It's, it's that kind of energy. And there's a kind of kingliness. I don't know why, but I was looking at this card here actually I'll just read out uh, the description the book for this so that you've got the description from the book so it says here Rajas dynamic movement aggression and energy so in its upright place upright position it says you are in a place of movement making the most of each day you are passionate and excited about the task at hand and are pushing the limits of what you believed possible for yourself Rajas is needed to bring our desires into action and you are deep in the development phase. You have already achieved many great accomplishments because of your determination and more await in the near future. However, remember to balance action with rest, otherwise you will lose sight of your true goal in the pursuit of achieving more. So that's the guidebook message and one of, one of the ways I was looking at this was I was looking at the Venus Mercury thing I was looking at Lee Kuan Yew and, and thinking about his chart because different charts pop into my mind and different people pop into my mind and because he had quite a bit of this swords type energy and he was a very strong leader as well and when it came to his creativity because he created a nation he Look at this. I mean, you lose nothing by being polite. The answer is no, but please say it politely and give the reasons. But it's like, one of the reasons I like this quote is he is, he is telling you to say no. And he was a strict guy and he was a no-nonsense guy and he was a visionary who, he was the king of his domain and he made it happen. I'm very much getting the feel that you need that energy and and to say no you know and, and and do it politely sure of course you would but the other thing I got from this quote was that it's important it's important to say no it's important to um, to make your boundaries very clear and it, you know, I'm kind of thinking that I think you may have been doing that with this, if this is in the upright position. But when she is upside down, when she's reversed. Hmm. We're, we're gonna draw some cards on this one because I feel like 
yeah, you lose nothing by being polite. Interesting why I, I picked that one as well. <coughs> that quote of all the quotes that were on that um, were on that page. I don't know why I picked that quote now that I think about it, but I think it works here. But it, I, mm, let's have a look. Okay, so I'm going to use my training deck, guys, and this is a thing of creativity. One day I was just like, I saw this on um, Hermit Tarot. So if you ever watch, if you ever want to watch, by the way, another tarot reader, if I'm not available, <coughs> I'll tell you a couple of people I watch. I watch um, Hermit Tarot. I love a Hermit Tarot. I love JJ Tarot. JJ Tarot is fantastic. So if you ever want uh, to, you know, watch somebody else, but she, Hermit Tarot has a, has a training deck where she writes all her scribbles and her notes. So I decided to make one as well because when I was learning tarot, I was like, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just, I need to do some physical things sometimes, something with my hands to get creative and to be creative. But let's take a look. Let's take a look at this queen of swords. Let's take a look at this. You lose nothing by being polite. The answer is no, but please say it politely and give the reasons. Mm, because I'm just realizing that this is something he's saying to somebody else. That you, you know, could you please be polite? He was, a, in terms of what kind of guy was he? I think he was a no nonsense. I think sometimes he wasn't polite because, because one of the reasons why I chose this cut, this quote was because it has the word polite, and I was thinking, yeah, group two shouldn't be so polite. Actually, I think you need to be strict. I think you need to draw some boundaries. Cut, you know, just go. Excuse me, you know. We're doing we're doing it like this. Well, not like, not in a mean way, but like in a you know, like here in a polite way. <laughs> There's something here. All right, let's look. I'm laughing about it's too much. Oh my gosh, we've got already 12 minutes. I'm just going to draw a couple of cards for you, and I'm going to try and see what what is this situation. I'm going to use my messy training deck, which has all the scribbles. Okay, these have just popped out because they really want to. So I'm going to take them. I'm going to take them all. So what have we got? We've got solitary enjoyment and wealth, which is the nine of pentacles. Okay. Solitary enjoyment and wealth, rewards, luxury. Mm-hmm. Okay. What else have we got here? Queen of cups in reverse. Wow. Two queens in reverse. Guys, this is amazing. And what? We've got the lovers. All right. I did think there was some love here, you know. This is fascinating. Mm. Choices. Yeah, okay. Let's take a look. Hold on a moment. This is all a mess. I'm just going to try and neaten things up here. So, I mean, look, you are this visionary. You are extremely creative. I think creativity-wise, you will benefit from doing a clutter clear. So there's that very practical thing going on, but there's some other interesting stuff going on in your life. I would say... I would say explore your options. <clears throat> I would say this is a time to explore your options. You've got a lot of options in life. Mm, Queen of Cups in reverse. Let's have a look at that. Insecurity, dependence, self-sacrifice. Mm. Hang on. Let's make that in focus. I'm kind of getting that I think you need to, especially, especially this is a bit of a love life thing, park it, whatever it is that's in your love life or that if you're insecure about something or you're not sure about something, take some time, be on your own. I'm going to draw one more. Mmm, waiting, slowing down. Yeah, look at that. This, this is the Eight of Wands in reverse. You have to slow down. Something to do with love. You have to slow, slow things down. It will become clear to you in time. 
and I'm getting a strong sense that there's nothing you need to do. All right, so group number two, that is your reading. I hope this has been a good reading for you. It's got quite a bit here. We've talked about creativity, we've talked about love as well. So let me know in the comments below how you got on with this reading. I'd really love to find out. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group three. If you chose group number three, you are in the right place. Let's take a look at your cards. By the way, group three, I don't know what it is, but <clears throat> I've had to um, stop and start this a couple of times because my throat has gone all crazy and I don't know what that's about. We will carry on though. I do have a glass of water by my side, so I might need it. Maybe, I don't know, there's something in this group where there's some clearing is needed, but uh, let's work through. Okay, Wonders is your first card. Absolutely beautiful. Now, as with any of my readings, please take on board what resonates and please discard what doesn't because <clears throat> not every message is going to be for you necessarily. Okay, we've got the Empress in reverse. We've got the Three of Cups in reverse. And from the Astrology deck, we've got Mars upright. Actually, I always count these as upright. I don't read these in reverse. I don't read Oracle decks in reverse. <coughs> and we've got Tamas upright. How beautiful. I just love, love, love the color scheme in this reading. And we've got a quote as well, which I will take you through. Yours is the group actually where the quote just popped into my mind because I know this guy's quote is Karl Lagerfeld. I know his quotes inside out basically. So a quote popped into my mind and then <clears throat> because I naturally had one come for you, I thought, well, let me get a quote for the other two groups. I didn't want them to feel left out. Okay, what's happening in this group in regards to creativity and your intuition? Are you with the flow? What's going on? So <clears throat> apologies about my throat. I'm going to carry through because I've tried to record. This is the second time I'm trying to record this now. So there's something I think maybe, I think there is something about expression. There might be something about expression. There might be something that you really want to say to someone, but you feel like you can't. Uh, your feminine energies are in the reverse position, which is the first thing that stood out to me. Now, that's showing me that there's something perhaps you're not receptive to um, at the moment. I do feel like you need rest as well. And, but it's an interesting one. You need to learn the place of rest in your life because we've also got this. I'm going to talk through all this. There's quite a lot here, actually. Um, <coughs> there's quite a few messages coming through. There's, when this is reversed by itself, a way of reading it is isolation. That's the Three of Cups. When the Empress is reversed. So this is like one of the most creative uh, cards in the deck. She is the one who gives birth and it is, it's the feminine energy that's actually creative. If you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. <coughs> this is where the creativity happens. This is, this is the one who gives birth. This is the one who creates. So there's something, so there's a bit of potentially a feeling isolated, potentially you're feeling a little bit blocked creatively. And it's interesting that I mentioned Caroline Mace in group number one, because I'm just about to mention her now. She talks about the fact that when our creativity is blocked, that can lead to physical challenges. She's done a lot of study on this. She's a medical intuitive. She's worked with, she worked with a Harvard neuroscientist. She's done all kinds of amazing work in the realms of health and intuition and all that type of thing. <coughs> so look at that, we've got the Empress in reverse and we've got this so this is linking in possibly with blocked creativity because you're not able to express your creativity or something along those lines you are needing this time out 
I remember, I don't know if any of you are choosing group three consistently. I remember group three, I think last week was it, or it was the one where I was at West Head, I was out in the wilderness and I said something about you guys have to get moving. And now look, I think you did get moving and now maybe you've ended up in this situation here where you're utterly exhausted or you're really tired. But this is beautiful. This is Tamas energy. This, this is very special. And I'm gonna read out what's in the guidebook because it's really well written. It says tamas, density, dullness and inertia. Then it says you are in a period of hibernation which is sometimes needed to blossom into a butterfly. I don't know if you can see those little butter butterflies there. Your body is between lines of a poem, notes of a song, steps of a dance. Use this time to fully rejuvenate your system, allowing proper rest and food. Know when it is time to emerge from your cocoon and show the world your gifts. Oh, hang on. Know when it is time to emerge from your cocoon and show the world the gifts you have been cultivating. Stillness is only balanced when you follow it by with action. <clears throat> okay. Absolutely. That, that is the massive thing that I got from this reading. One of the things I think about your style of creativity and what how you feel about creativity, you might think that you need to be inspired in the mood, the conditions have to be right, things have to be a certain way. You know, there are a lot of people who are like, oh, I can only paint when I feel like this, or <clears throat> I can only write when I'm in the mood, or, you know, I have to wait for that mood, otherwise, you know, I, I'm just trying at something I'm just spinning my wheels and it's I'm going to produce rubbish kind of thing there 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 can be that uh, feeling now Mars this is a very different energy okay so if, if we look at all of this is kind of working together here but all of this I will say it may not take you anywhere okay these energies here now this quote and this will take you somewhere okay so this is mars the doer mars gets it done mars doesn't care about the mood <laughs> right he's like i don't care what mood i have to write a book i have to do it right the book has to be written i'm going to write a book now sometimes that can produce terrible books i know but <laughs> but at least it will get done okay now the quote that popped into my head which is really going to tie this entire reading together is Karl Lagerfeld, who said, ideas come to you when you work. And I love this because this has been my experience exactly, that when I'm working, then the ideas come. If I'm not working and if I'm waiting for inspiration or if I'm, you know, wanting the conditions to be just right, kind of thing you know I, I don't know it I, I can I can see because this is comfortable <laughs> this is really comfortable and I like this <laughs> I like to be lounging about and doing nothing and of course I do but through my experience uh, of creativity over the, yeah over a long time what I've discovered is that too much of this, too much of all of this isn't good. So too much isolation is actually not good either. Um, we do need to mix with people. We do need, even if you're an introvert, even if you're a bookish introvert like me, I, I am like this. I, I love to just be on my own, be in my own little world, wandering, you know, I can, look at a tree for hours and, and that kind of thing. I love all of that. But the reality is we do need people in our lives. And <clears throat> very often it's that interaction with other people that stimulates ideas, that gets the mind thinking. It's a bit like, I don't know if you watched the introduction to this video, but I talked about how I was at this IT company. And as a team, we would put things up, just putting these A4 sheets up and 
drawing these diagrams and mind maps and, and doing that kind of activity. Um, it was so good. It, it, it got us talking and it was really great. <clears throat> so maybe, maybe that is the case for you. Maybe, maybe interacting, collaborating, maybe that's going to be important for you. So look into that because that will speed up this process, which look, I'm not saying it's bad to be here because I was in this process <laughs> for several months of last year where I could not do any work. I know what it is to be this and you physically can't, I know. Um, and th that's why you're a bit like group one because I feel like, and I, I hope group one comes and watches here as well because there is this thing of the physical body is the instrument through which the divine ideas come and the inspiration and all of that comes through the physical body and it's important for you to figure out how your body works you know do you work best at night do you work best in the day do you you know are you relying on coffee or something like that too much i'm not saying that's a bad thing that might be good for you that might even be healthy for you but it's like just being conscious of your body as the instrument that catches the ideas or maybe these butterflies are the ideas you know and they're trying to come into the instrument here and they can't kind of thing it's like we can see this in that way but there's there is that thing of your body is the instrument and how tuned is it are you looking after yourself um, and it's not like this reading is asking you to do anything it's just getting you to contemplate these things, that's all. We're just contemplating all these things. And these being in their reverse position, I, I'm only just seeing that there's some mild creative blockage or something. Uh, I don't see that it's, it's any big thing. And any time you're feeling, and I do go through this, I go through these days where um, where I just can't get in the flow, or I, I, can, I can actually feel the connection switched off. I can, I can feel that sometimes, and I will be down. I will be a bit miserable, down. Uh, I feel sad, I feel sad, I feel down, yeah. And I, I'll just embrace it. I'll just go, do you know what? I've woken up and today is a terrible day and I'm, just gonna, I'm actually just gonna do this for as long as it feels right. And if some days you need to do that, do it, do it. If you wake up and you feel like, no, this is not the day. So I'm definitely not saying that, you know, um, that time out is, is not a good thing. It is, and, and, but it's just, you have to figure out when you need it and pay attention to your body. Because sometimes when we are working, ideas come to you when you work and when, and yeah, like like using your hands. So okay, so this was something I did, and we might as well let's let's shuffle a little bit. I've got my training deck here to show you today. So this training deck, I got some markers and I scribbled all over the cards, and I've written my notes. And but I wanted something physical to do to help me learn tarot, and this was a really good exercise. And I don't often shuffle these and use them in that way because it's kind of, I prefer just using a blank deck. Um, but let's see, let's shuffle a little bit and see what extra guidance comes through for you in terms of creativity. Whoops, just about to knock over the camera. Let's see what comes. I'm gonna shuffle these really, really, really well. Okay, so what do we wanna ask? I think we wanna ask, I think we wanna ask about a little bit of guidance because this is Mars energy. This is get on and do it, make it happen. But maybe there's something here that might need some clarification. So let's see what that is. Let's see what comes through. Oh wow, we're at the 14 minute mark, far out. These have been long today. Sorry guys, I don't know if, I, I know that the short ones tend to go better, but let me know if this size is okay. Uh, it's because I wanna shuffle a little bit and see. So we're going to take that one, we're going to take one more. Okay, definitely, okay, we'll take those. Okay, okay, we'll take all of these. So what's first we have, wow, we've got the sun reversed. Okay. 
And let's get that in focus. Sun first, look for the bright side. Mm. Yeah, so there is a little bit of um, something's feeling a bit down here. Okay. Two of Wands in reverse, disorganized. What else have I written? Disorganized like a planning bad plan. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, I know all these energies. I know what it is to be all of this. We've got the Ace of Swords uh, in reverse chaos. Okay. Yeah, confusing, confusion chaos. Three of Wands, obstacles, delays, frustration. Yeah. All these in reverse. Okay, so that is interesting. I can't leave you with all that. <laughs> so we're going to shuffle a bit more. I'm going to see how this situation resolves. the knight of swords look at that mars it's there's something you need yeah i don't think i need to let's see what the bottom of the deck has yeah restlessness i'll take that i think we've got our answer though i think these two are the answer to all of this because i think if we if we were to keep drawing cards here we're just going to keep getting more of the same. And the answer is, so Four of Swords in Reverse is really coming out of uh, the, the rest situation. But don't burn yourself out, okay? Big, big, big message. This is not a thing of burnout. And I think, I think you might need to do some body work. You might just need to find out what it is your body needs because the body is the instrument through which all the work happens we've got here decisive action the knight of can you see that knight of swords decisive action you need mars energy you need this is your solution to all of this and i reckon i could get several decks and keep drawing cards about this and just keep getting more cards that are all like this and what we've got is we've got karl lagerfeld saying Ideas come to you when you work. And we've got this Mars card here, which is do, you know, make it happen. Hands on. Go, go, go. That's going to be important. But not, not in such a way that it puts you in this position, okay? Because, you know, and we all know this. I know this. I've been in this situation. Well, I'm, when I saw this today, I was like, oh, I'm looking forward to some of this tomorrow because <laughs> it's Saturday. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this the whole weekend. That's what I'm looking forward to. But yeah, this, 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 this is what you need. So I hope this has been good, group number three. Let me know in the comments below if, um, if this has been the right guidance for you on this occasion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear how this went for you. Please let me know. This has been a long reading, so who knows, I might try to make these a bit shorter in the future, but maybe the long ones are okay. All right, well guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you next time.